Morning. Morning. Let's pray. Father God, our prayer is that as we come here this morning, we would meet you, the God of grace, the God of love. And we're grateful that that is exactly who you are. Father, we pray that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear how that changes absolutely everything about our lives. In your holy son's name we pray, amen. So I don't know about you, but this is that time of year. Everybody's thinking through New Year's resolutions and stuff, right? I mean, how many of you made them? Let's be honest. Okay, all right, come on now. And it's interesting to see, I was watching a TV show the other day and how they're making fun of people who do New Year's resolutions, right? Like the futility of it. They're just going, it never works. How long, what do you give them, three days, four days? You know, that kind of thing. And it's interesting, you know, I, I get asked to uh, work with people one-on-one -on -one a lot and, and do what we would call mentoring or life coaching with people uh, all over the place. And every single time, it always comes back down to the same thing. If you really want to understand how to change, how to be different, how to be transformed, it always comes back to the same thing. It's the grace of God. The only thing that can change a human being, a human life, is the grace of God. Always has been, always will be. Everything else, you know, good human effort, good strong will to change, will never result in the change that only God can bring about in our lives. Today we're gonna to be looking at baptism and the power of baptism. How if we understand what God has done in those of us who have been baptized and what it means for us every day we live, how it can change, that means of grace to us absolutely everything. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, right around New Year's, uh, well, I guess it'd be a week ago or some, something like that, you know, do the number, math. Uh, my wife and I took our kids and gave them to our, my, grandma, my mom and dad, their grandma and grandpa, and said, we're gone for three days. See ya. How many of you did something similar in a wise fashion, right? That was good, just wisdom there. And we went up uh, just north of Milwaukee to Brown Deer, Wisconsin, and we just got away because I had these hotel miles, and we said, I gotta get away. How many of you feel like you wish you had that opportunity to do that too, right? right? Well, by God's grace, we had it, and we needed it. And we had like four-hour lunches. And I wasn't eating the whole time. Quit judging me, I, I, you know, <laughs> all right? We had like three-hour dinners. There was no agenda. It was just, what do you want to do next? I don't know. You kind of just, we talked and talked and prayed and thought and said, you know, 2012, interestingly, the world didn't end, but 2013's here. What's possible? You know, I think sometimes we ought to start our thinking about what's new with what's possible. Now, if our intention is to just give it our best, you know, give it the old college try, what's possible is probably a lot less than what we think is really realistic. Sometimes when working with people, I have to come to them and say, I think your goals need to be right-sized. I think we need to right-size those goals. Does that make sense? They're shooting way too big for what's possible. But for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, what's possible? Because through baptism, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us. It's whatever he wants. Thy will be done. Absolutely anything is possible. And as we were going through this, and I was searching the scriptures, I came over a, a very familiar verse. I'm sure it's familiar to all of us. Lamentations 3.23. You spend a lot of time in Lamentations, right? In this amazingly positive verse, right out of that book of Lament, right? And in one of our most famous hymns, right? Great is his faithfulness. I got this from the New Living Translation because I like the little twist. His mercies begin afresh each morning. How many of you feel like you really need to know and experience that today? You need a new start. You need a new beginning. I'm here to tell you that if you would understand what has happened if you have been baptized, and if you have not been baptized, please come and see us. 
We want you to know this amazing grace of God that can change everything. Before baptism, trying to do it in my own strength. After baptism, the Holy Spirit lives within me. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. His mercies are afresh each morning. Isn't that good? Don't, some of you just need to kind of just feel that right now. Well, that is true, and it's good. Unfortunately, most of us don't live in that peace, that shalom of God, that rest, that living in his grace place. Most of us are trained very well, by the way, by our world, which teaches us that it's not about who you are or whose you are. It's about what you do. Does anybody here relate to that? When you stop doing things, does it seem like people seem to care less? When you stop performing for people, does it seem like they don't care? In the Delta course, which I know you're all just trying to figure out which one to sign up for, so it's on those sheets. Am I overshooting on that? No, no, no. Let's get it going here, people. We use this paradigm to help you understand the way the world is trying to train you to think and to act and how just the opposite is in the kingdom of heaven. It always starts with achievement and activity, okay? Do something. And we find our identity from what we do. I'm the guy who did that or does this. Or... And then we're driven to do more of it because it seems as if when I do good, whatever that's defined as, you like me, you accept me. Does that make sense to you? And we get caught in what we call the cycle of grief. Because that only leads to grief. When can I do enough? When do I know I've not done enough? When, do I, when is enough enough? And what happens when I stop performing? I work with a lot of athletes. And I myself, you know, was an athlete. Uh, I like to say that I still am. But I just can't, you know, as much anymore. Um, and it's interesting. You know, I was, a, I was an All-American middle linebacker uh, in college. And and it was great when you were performing and all that, but then I got hurt, and I almost died playing football. I had a massive concussion. I missed six games out of my senior year. And I'll never forget the difference of how people treated you when you were the guy doing 18 tackles a game, getting interceptions and all this stuff, to when you weren't. It was like night and day. And I just thank God that I wasn't basing my understanding of my identity on what I did back then. Because I would have been in a bad way. Does that make sense to you? Because now I'm not the guy who does that. Who am I? And a lot of times when people call me for mentoring or counseling, amidst all their questions, there's that core reality question. You know what they're asking? Who am I? I just lost my job. Who am I? And we get the privilege, we get the honor, we get to tell them that the core of who they are, maybe they just forgot. That's okay. His mercies are afresh every morning, right? That you are a child of the living God. You've been baptized and you're his. Just come back. Repent. Return. And you will find life and peace. So that leads us into our gospel. Because I'm wondering as two thirds 2013 starts to get rolling here. Are you at the same place these people were? Are you waiting expectantly, looking for the answers to real living? Maybe you need a new beginning. Well, I've got good news. Our Lord is the Lord of a zillion trillion new beginnings. His mercies are afresh each day. They were waiting expectantly, and they were wondering in their hearts, if John, you know, John the Baptist, might possibly be the Messiah. They saw God doing miraculous things using this man. John answered them all very clearly. I baptize you with water. I've been telling you to come and repent. I've been asking you to change your ways. That's step one. But one who is more powerful than I will come the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And if you remember another telling of this incident, in another gospel, where, uh, when Jesus does come, John goes, no, 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 no. I'm not baptizing you. I need to be baptized by you. Remember that? 
And he goes, no, 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 this needs to be done so that we can fulfill prophecy. It is good and it is right. And here's what happened. When he comes, he will baptize you not just with water. This is not just a religious situation happening here. It's not just a nice little forehead cleansing. Or if we could dunk you, this isn't just a body wash. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I wonder what you think that means. You have the Holy Spirit living in you if you've been baptized. You have the fire of God, which has the possibility to do anything. You know, I've been working with a few of us this week, and some of us are in really hard places right now. We don't know where the job situation, how it's going to play out. Finances are looking pretty bad. We've got deaths around us. We've got people that are mistreating us. We've got a lot of relational dysfunction. Does anybody relate to any of that? And here's the good news. His mercies are new. They are afresh every morning. You can return to the promise of God to you in baptism. You can experience his grace afresh and his fire. And he can guide you to a new life. And he will empower that new life. We're only going to have kind of one major principle in this whole thing. And it starts with an understanding of this piece right here. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. And he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. Do you know what his good news was? It's very simple. Depend on God. Depend on God. You want to be the wheat, not the chaff in this situation. You want to be those who are depending on God. No matter the circumstance, living by faith, no matter what, living in his grace, content with your lot in life, no matter what. God calls us to live dependently on him. That's what John the Baptist understood. That's what he's calling us back to remember, and that's what Jesus understood. When we don't live dependently on him, we are called to repent and resubmit to him and engage that grace again. Remember our baptism over and over. See, I'm hoping that your vision of what happened in baptism is starting to expand now. You start to see that it is this amazing means of grace for us for our entire lives. It is the only way to have an amazing new beginning. And again, those of us who've been baptized, we have that in us. Now we need to return to it and get that new mercy afresh every morning. He continues. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch, because of his marriage to Herodias, see, everybody might not respond well to this message. His brother's wife and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. To all those sins, he's going to add this final one. He locked John up in prison. And in very short order, he's about to chop his head off. Does that make sense? Not everybody's going to respond to this, come back to the Lord. You can't do life without him. Life doesn't work on your own. Come back, depend on the Lord. Live in his grace. That's where life is. And then, and then this isn't in chronological order, of course. He's just saying that's what's going to happen to John. And then he has this amazing snippet. When all the people were being baptized... Guess who came? Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened up and the Holy Spirit of God descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. And here's what you need to remember about baptism. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Whenever you come dependently on God, you receive that you're my child, and I love you. And what am I well pleased with? That you came to depend on me. You came back. I don't care about what you did. What I care about is that you came back. What I care about is that you're found. Now stay found, and you will live. Isn't that good news? That is the heartbeat of God. His grace never stops beating for us. And so instead of the cycle of grief, you engage in his cycle of grace. 
where it doesn't begin with activity. It begins with love. It begins with acceptance. It begins with relationship, but I haven't done anything. I can't do anything to earn it. He just loves me. You do understand that this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He's not done anything yet. Not publicly. And so he begins with that acceptance. And as we're told in Mark 1, 35, it was Jesus' custom to daily draw away to be with the Father, to remember baptism. Remember the words of the Father, I love you. Because that will guide your life. That grace, that new beginning, that mercy that's afresh every morning, come and take part in it. Because if you're like me, you drift away from remembering And you start being impacted by the evil one and your sinful nature and the ways of this world. And you start thinking, I've got to work hard. I've got to do it. And you stop depending on God. And you start depending on you. And now we've moved from light to darkness, from life to death. So return. And as we are sustained in that, we remember our identity as children of God through whom the Holy Spirit wants to live. And we let God bear fruit through our lives. That's the cycle of grace. That's the cycle of God. Do you see how different it is? One begins in love and ends up God using our lives to change the world. And one is us just trying to piddle along, trying to be good people. Do you see how different that is? And God wants to call us back to that baptismal promise of grace, to live in that grace as we come for communion today, to engage in another means of his grace, to remember what he has done, died for us so that we might know this grace. Daily, moment by moment, living in that grace. Which takes us to Romans. You know, my my children have been baptized, but they're right at that age, especially Jared. He's coming, you know, he's 13, where I'm wondering, does he get it? what God has done in baptism. And that's why we have a confirmation process around here, right? Most of you were baptized as babies, yes? Yeah, and, and so that's what confirmation's about, helping make sure that they get it. The power of baptism. The Holy Spirit living in them. If they would learn to depend on God, they would live. If not, not so much. So here's Romans. Because see, one of the real dangers of this amazing truth of grace is that we might want to take advantage of it. Well then, this is him responding to a question right from the church in Rome. Should we keep on sinning so that God, here's why we do it though, so that God would, you know, show us more and more of this wonderful grace. That would, you know, that's good. Paul's going, you know, boom, upside the head. You know, wake up. Of course not. And here's why. Let me help you remember baptism. Since we have died to sin, that's the baptismal imagery, dead to sin in the world, alive in Christ Jesus. Dead to sin, alive in Christ Jesus. Since we've died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Oh, right. Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? We joined him in his death in his understanding that to live non-dependent on God is death. We're going to die to that old way of life. We're going to find that life only in him. We have that amazing symbol in baptism to remind us over and over again. For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Let me say that again. Now we also may live new lives. How many sins are you wrestling with right now? That you're given at the old college try and you're not returning, remembering your baptism and depending on God's power for transformation. We can do this with, we can turn it into religion, you see. He's saying, depend on me. All real change, all true new beginnings begin in grace, exist in grace, and end in grace. It's all God doing it. We may live new lives. 
Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ. Hello. So that the sin, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Here's the reality. Maybe you need to put this like on your dashboard of your car. I am no longer a slave to sin. I will not keep doing this sinful thing. I am no longer a slave to sin. I've been renewed through the waters of baptism. And as I come and remember, I will have the power, the Holy Spirit and the fire to live as he calls me to live. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm not a slave. Don't listen to that anymore. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. But if you're like me, you forget And you go back to this old way of thinking and this old way of trying to get it done and work hard and it doesn't work. The only thing that brings about change is the grace of God. And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. And here's the big finish. We're sure of this. Absolutely certain of it. Because Christ was raised from the dead. And he will never die. He has defeated sin and death. It's over. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin, and it's done. That's what happens. That's what we remember in baptism. That's what we remember as we engage in these sacraments of baptism and communion, the Lord's Supper. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God, and so can we. So you also should consider yourselves Maybe this is the second thing you want to write and just put it right on that dashboard of your life. Put it on a mirror so you see it every day. Consider yourselves dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. That is who we are as his children. Don't forget. Don't let the evil one or the world trick you into thinking that that is not your reality. Live into who we are. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, you are so good to us. Your grace just blows us away. If we could just plumb the depths of your, the understanding of what your grace means to us, how it changes us, how it brings life in and through us, all we can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. And Father, as we come to partake of your grace again, we come humbly, we come dependently, on you for all real life. In Jesus' name.